Hey yogis, thank you so much for joining me for another online yoga class. Today we're going to be working with the element space or sometimes referred to as ether. It's the fifth element that makes up our elemental yoga series. So it's the last one today. Thank you all who, for, who have joined me. Um, if you've been enjoying the classes, please feel free to subscribe, like and share with your friends if you know anyone that you think may enjoy them. Um, as well, links to the Instagram and Facebook and PayPal down below if you wanted to choose to follow me or pay via donation through PayPal. So element of space, we're going to be working a lot with extension through the joints today. This means that we're going to be working a lot with flexibility. So we're going to be creating space within our body. If you know you have particularly tight areas within the body, say hamstrings, shoulders, um, tight hips, this is gonna be a really good way of opening up, but make sure you listen to your body. You don't want to be feeling any pain, you want to be feeling a nice deep stretch. We're going to be spending a lot of time in the practice down on the floor today, opening up through some slightly more passive movements. So I recommend if you have a block, bring that with you or not, if not, cushions will be fine. And if you've got a strap, that may be helpful too. I really hope you enjoy the class. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste. Okay, so we're gonna start in a comfortable seated position, whatever that looks like for you. You can sit cross legs, you can extend your legs out in front, you can sit on a block to help establish your foundations. If you wanted to take a hand mudra, you can take a kasha mudra by connecting the root of the index finger, sorry, the tip of the index finger to the root of the thumb. Kind of a funny movement to have in the hands, but this is the mudra for space, creating the um, space within us, sometimes called the element of ether but allowing that room for maneuvering in the body. Softly closing the eyes, beginning to connect to your Ujjayi Pranayama, breathing in and out through the nose, creating a small restriction to the back of the throat as you exhale, creating an audible breath, sounding like the waves. strong foundations grounding down through the sit bones and from there creating the space within your body and the shoulders to draw down maybe even lifting the chin slightly feel very open in the front side of the body feeling the breath journey all the way down into the belly here One more deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, let it go. Bring the palms together at the heart center. Softly open the eyes. Namaste. Okay, so we're gonna start with our spinal warm up. Just focus here on creating space within the joints and becoming aware of any um, tight sensations you may be experiencing. Become aware of these without attaching any stories to them. So bring your right hand to the outside of the right hip. As we inhale, we extend up through the left fingertips. Really focus on creating the space all the way up to the tips of each finger. And as we exhale, we side bend over to the right. Tune into how you're feeling within the ribs as we expand across the side body, stretching out the muscles, the obliques. Maybe even looking up to the tops of the right fingertips if it's comfortable in the neck reaching through the crown of the head, grounding down through the sit bones. And we inhale, come up through center. Again, expanding, reaching up, try to avoid hunching through the shoulders, but keep them drawn away from the ears. Exhale, left hand to the outside of the left hip. Inhale to extend, to reach. Exhale, side bend over towards the left, grounding again through the sit bones. Maybe looking up towards the fingertips. Tuning into how you're feeling in the right side of the body, separating and expanding through the right rib cage and the right side of the obliques. Inhale to extend through center. Exhale, left hand to the outside of the left hip, right hand towards the left knee. Inhale, draw up through the crown of the head. Exhale to twist. So trying to create length as well as twisting. So we have a tendency to kind of like round through the upper back as we twist deeper. Try to maintain the integrity, the strength of the spine as we lift up. 
stay nice and tall and then as we exhale we allow ourselves to go a bit deeper inhale through center reaching up exhale left hand to the outside of the left hip right hand towards the left knee inhale to create that lift exhale to twist so it's a common rule in yoga that as we inhale we create the space and then as we exhale we allow ourselves to go deeper into the posture this class we're going to be focusing a lot more on the inhales to create the space we're going to be creating all this room in our body to allow ourselves to go a little bit deeper to get more flexible into the postures inhale come up exhale release the hands down coming into our tabletop position on our hands and knees wrists underneath shoulders knees underneath your hips as we inhale we move the spine into extension crown of the head comes up chest forward belly down tailbone comes up as we exhale rounding into flexion crown of the head releases down chest releases uh, sorry chin releases towards the chest shoulder blades lift and separate take two more of each at your own pace following your own rhythms really tuning into how you're feeling in the entire length of the spine how are you feeling in the lower back how are you feeling where the spine meets the hips how are you feeling in the shoulders as you press forward into your cat pose exhale and on your next breath in come back to a neutral spine We'll come into our first downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Bring the palms of the hands forward, fingers spread nice and wide. Tuck the toes under, lift the sit bones up and back towards the ceiling. Focus on keeping the knees bent to start with and grounding down through the palms of the hands. We have a tendency, not everyone, but we have a tendency to roll out to the outer edges of the hands. Just become aware of this and begin to press down through the index finger and thumb side of the hand. Staying strong through the forearms, pressing up into the shoulders and then maintaining that strength and that integrity, draw the shoulder blades down and away from the ears. So you have plenty of space around the neck and the head. Sit bones lift up, keep the low belly drawn in to help protect the spine. Should feel nice and hollow in your low belly and this helps to lift the sit bones up towards the ceiling as well. If you wanted to take a little bit more of a stretch into the hamstrings, you can begin to press one heel at a time or both heels down towards the floor, allowing the chest to melt down towards the floor. As we inhale, look forward. In as many steps as you need, come to our ragdoll. So feet hips distance or wider. Knees bent to start with. Take opposite hand to opposite elbow as you bring soft movements. How are you feeling in the hamstrings here? Maybe begin to bend one and straighten the other. Rocking the hips side to side. Hamstrings is a really common place to hold a lot of tension. So become aware of that. If they're feeling a little bit tight today, pay them extra attention, extra love. Modify as needed with props. And then as we inhale, release the hold of the elbow, staying rooted through the feet, bent through the knees. Begin to roll up the spine, stacking one vertebrae at a time very, very slowly, all the way up until your chin comes parallel with the floor, samasthitihi, big toes touching, a little bit of space between the heels, feet, um, sorry, arches of the feet lifted, knees lifted, quadriceps engaged, tailbone draws down, shoulders up and away from the ears, palms face forward, looking forward. Three rounds of Surya Namaskara A to make sure we get into all the muscle groups and all the joint groups. As we inhale, bring the arms up overhead. Keep the shoulders drawing away from the ears, look forward. Make sure you draw the low ribs in, tailbone draws down towards the floor. Exhale, gentle bend to the knees as we fold forward, bringing the hands down to thighs, shins, or gentle bend as we bring the hands towards the floor. As we inhale, we begin to extend through the spine, look forward, chest forward. Remember to draw the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, bend the knees as much as you need to, to plant the hands. Stepping back to plank, lower all the way down onto the belly. Knees can be lifted or lowered. Inhale, baby cobra, tops of the feet flat to the floor, chest lifted, looking forward, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, forehead releases down. Pressing through tabletop, tuck the toes under, 
downward facing dog. Knees can be bent here or you can work with the dynamic movement of pressing the heels down one at a time. Meaning to open up through the backs of the legs. How are you feeling in the shoulders? This is another place where we hold a lot of tension around the shoulders and the neck. So another place you want to be giving extra love to. As we inhale, look to the space between the hands and as many steps as you need. Come forward to that halfway lift, lifting the chest, staying nice and long through the spine, hips over the heels if the legs are straight. As we exhale, soft bend to the knees as the crown of the head releases down. Inhale come all the way up if you can a straight spine this time arms up overhead shoulders away from the ears looking forward and exhale to release samastitihi okay some slightly different options this time as we inhale bring the arms up overhead this time maybe bring the palms together looking towards the thumbs as we exhale we hinge forward from the hips bringing the hands down towards the floor Inhale, head up, chest lifts. If you're feeling flexible in the backs of the legs, maybe the hands stay on the floor here. Exhale, step or float back through Chaturanga. If you're jumping back, make sure to land with bent elbows, hips nice and high, to land softly. Inhale, again, baby cobra, or coming towards upward facing dog, arms straight, knees lifted. You can look towards the ceiling or look in front of you, depending on how comfortable it is on your neck. And then as we exhale, you can flip the feet or roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Steadying your breath. As we inhale, look forward. Step or float. So if you're floating, knees bent, toe up onto the toes, lift the hips high, land softly. Exhale, crown of the head releases towards the floor. Inhale, all the way up, low ribs in, tailbone down, exhale, samastitihi, last round, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, Remember to take it at your own pace. Exhale. Steady your breath, taking a couple of deep breaths in and out through the nose, trying to get the inhales to match the exhales. And try and find comfort in the poses that are a little bit intense. Always be aware of your body. So if there's pain, obviously come out gently of the posture, but as the intensity builds, try to deepen the breath. See if you can maintain a calm mind as the body builds in intensity. Inhale, look forward. Step or float. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, release to Samastitihi. Okay, we're going to come into a variation on Ashtashandrasana, high lunge. So we're just going to start by stepping the right foot back behind us. So this isn't warrior one. The back heel is going to stay lifted. And in fact, you're going to charge through that back heel. The front leg is towards parallel with the floor as we sink low into the hips. Okay, so this is just a preparatory pose. And what we're going to be doing is moving into a variation on pyramid. So we're just opening up through the hips here. Feel how you notice how you're feeling in the hip flexors, the right side of the hip, elbows draw back, shoulders away from the ears. And then what we're going to do is we're going to begin to straighten the left leg. And you can either bring your hands down towards the floor, or if you have blocks, just bring your hands to either side onto the blocks beginning to bring your chin down towards your shin, looking towards the left big toe. So this is slightly different from traditional Parashvottanasana. Our back heel is still lifted and we're in a slightly longer stance. Okay, so as we fold here, we should be feeling a really lovely juicy stretch along the back of the left leg, maybe even the top of the left foot as well, as we move it into plantar flexion. So the bottom of the foot comes into a flexion. 
try and maintain a nice strong and long spine. Avoid just hanging out here, bringing the chin towards the chest, but instead find your focus on your left big toe. Allow yourself to surrender to the posture as we go a little bit deeper. And then as we inhale, head up, exhale. Inhale, coming back into our lunge position. So hands can be on the waist. Trying not to build too much heat here. Instead, working with flexibility, opening up through the muscle groups. And then in as many steps as you need, you can hop forward back to the front of the mat, coming into your Samastiti. And then when you're ready, we're going to come into it on the other side. So bringing your left foot back quite a wide stance really. So you're gonna be charging through the left heel, bringing the heel down towards the floor, but it's not gonna necessarily aim to reach the floor, just heading in that direction. Bring the hands to the waist, sink low into the right hip. Okay, so tune into how you're feeling in the left hip flexors. Okay, the more you straighten the left leg, the more intense the stretch is gonna be in the hip flexors. So if you're here with the knee bent, and it's okay, if you need to drop the knee to the floor, you can do that. It's gonna take a little bit of the strain out of the hip flexors. So if you're feeling like this is super intense, you can always drop the knee down. If you bring the knee more towards straight, you're gonna feel it beginning to stretch that little bit more. Bringing, ideally, shoulders over the hips. You can bring the palms to the waist, elbows away, shoulders down and away from the ears. And then we're going to come into our Parjvottanasana, bringing the palms down to either side of the right foot, looking towards the right big toe. As we extend that right leg towards straight, left heel remains lifted, but charging towards the back of the mat. Steady your breath with each inhale. Create that space, length and lift. Feel all that beautiful energy traveling within you. And then as you exhale, allow yourself to surrender to the posture. If you need to have a gentle bend in the right knee, if this is feeling super intense in the hamstring, then feel free to bend as much as you need to or shorten the stance as well. Great option. Maybe bring the feet wider as well. A little bit better for balance. As we inhale, come forward to our Ashta Chandrasana. High lunge. Exhale. And then as we inhale, in as many steps as you need, come forward, Samastiti. We're going to come into Utita Stiti, Bhujangasana. So we're going to take a standing cobra. So we don't do this that often. We often do um, cobra on our bellies. So this is a good one to kind of open up the spine through extension. It's a good way of opening through the front body, pre preparing for our back bends later on in class. So bringing the feet to um, either toes touching or feet hips distance apart, depending on where you feel more comfortable. You can, first option is to bring the hands to your lower back, fingers pointing towards the um, buttocks, <laughs> thumbs to the outside of the waist. Okay, so that's the first option. Draw the elbows away, shoulders away from the ears. Second option, if that's uncomfortable on the wrist, is to bring the thumbs in and the fingers to the outside of the waist. Okay, the last option, is to bring the hands to the lower legs, well, sorry, the, the thighs, the backs of the thighs. And then what we're going to do is move into our back bend. So as we inhale, deep breath in, lift the chest up towards the ceiling, begin to lift the gaze. And then as we exhale, begin to move into your back bend, looking either up towards the ceiling or back behind you. If you feel compression in your lumbar spine, your lower back, that may be an indication that you're going in a little bit too deep. So try to instead lift from the chest, allow the shoulders to melt away from the ears. And when you're ready, bring the hands to the back for support if they want. Come all the way back up and release the hands. That could be quite an intense posture. Just tune into how you're feeling. We try, I try to use the term front, front side opener as opposed to back bends because what you really want to visualize is all the soft tissues in the front of the body stretching out and allowing you to go that little bit deeper. We're going to vinyasa through to malasana. So as we inhale, we bring the arms up overhead. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips. Inhale, head up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, 
upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Malasana, inhale, step or float the feet to mat's distance apart either side of the hands. Land as lightly as you can. Sitting the hips low, if the heels don't reach the floor, you can roll up the mat or place blocks underneath your heels. Hands can be on the floor or if it's accessible, palms towards the heart center, thumbs to sternum, sternum towards thumbs, pressing into the elbows to draw the knees out a little bit wider. Toes and knees should be facing in the same direction. Okay, so don't try to get the toes to face forwards. Try to notice which direction, if they had little arrows on them, they'll be facing the same direction as the toes. If you're feeling like this is a nice stretch, but it's a little bit intense, you can always just sit on a block, okay? And feel the stretch in the inner thighs. Steady your breath. Find a steady gaze point. Notice where you're feeling the stretch. So this can be quite an intense one on the inner thighs as we open up through the adductor muscles all along the inside of the femur. This is also an external rotation of the hip joint. So we're actually stretching out the lateral um, rotators and the glutes. So you may feel this in the outer side of your buttocks, feeling a nice deep stretch there. You may feel it in the ankles as well, hopefully no pain, but you may be feeling a little bit of a stretch in the um, tops of the feet. Steadying your breath. Taking one more deep breath in. And as we exhale, we're gonna come through to Virasana, Hero's Pose. So you're going to press, press the hands down, come into a downward facing dog, or I like to come into a downward facing dog, drop to the shins and sit the hips back to the heels. Now for some of you, this may already feel like an intense stretch. If it feels too much, um, or you feel pain in the knees, always modify. So maybe that means coming up to like a high kneeling position, hips over the knees and work with this here. If you're feeling like it's an intense stretch, but you're feeling no pain, bring a block between the heels and sit down on any setting or a cushion onto that. There should be no pain in the knees, no pain in the ankles. If you're feeling like taking it a little bit deeper to stretch out the quadriceps, Bring the hips in between the heels. So try to make sure that the knees are together, certainly no wider than hips distance apart. You want it to look to take it even deeper, stretching out the hip flexors, the quadriceps, you can drop back onto the elbows, looking forward, keeping the chest nice and lifted. Final option is to release down. You can keep your hands alongside the body, or if you wanted to take a shoulder expansion as well, Take opposite hand to opposite elbow. Opening up through the front body. So this is a super intense stretch for the uh, hip flexors because not only are they stretching down towards the knees, but they're stretching from the hips as well. One more deep breath. And then inhale. If you were reclined very gently, prop up onto the elbows first and bring the hands behind you. Lift up the hips, bring the feet together and shift the hips off to one side, extending the legs out in front. We're gonna come into Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. So we've just had um, a stretch for the hip flexors. We're now gonna have a stretch for the hip extenders, which is the hamstrings along the backs of the legs. So for Paschimottanasana, we're going to inhale here, lengthen. And then as we exhale, 
For Paschimottanasana A, hook the peace fingers around the big toes. If you'd rather take C variation, taking the hands to the outside of the feet or the heels, that's fine. Or for D, interlace the index finger and the thumb around the wrist and place them over the tops of the feet. And then as we exhale, chin towards the shins, either looking towards the toes or off the tip of the nose. If you need to bend in the knees, feel free to do that. Or if you have a strap, take that around the tops of the feet, or you can just take hold of the shins if you don't have a strap accessible. Take one more deep breath in and out through the nose. Inhale, head up, look forward towards the toes. Exhale. Inhale, come all the way back up. Maybe even take a little lift at the top, lifting the chest, looking up. Tune into how you're feeling. Okay, we're gonna move into uh, Ekapada Kapotasana, one leg king pigeon pose. So I like to come at it from a downward facing dog. I find it gives me a little bit more space. If you'd rather come at it from a tabletop, you can work with that as well. So looking towards the space in between the hands, you're going to bring the right foot towards the right wrist to start with. Okay, you can lower your left knee down. And then from here, you're going to heel toe, your right foot over towards the left and bring the right knee down towards the right wrist. Okay, so ultimately the shin will be parallel to the front edge of the mat. It doesn't have to be there today. If it feels more comfortable to bring the right uh, ankle down towards the left hip bone, that's fine too. Okay, so having the shin more towards parallel will give a deep rotator stretch. So opening up through the external rotators of the hip. You can place a block underneath the sit bones if it doesn't quite reach the floor for support. This helps to protect the knee. And then from there, begin to walk your left foot back behind you. Okay, you can stay here in a slightly more um, active stretch, lifting through the chest, grounding down through the sit bones of the right leg. Or you can come forward, maybe onto the forearms, maybe resting the forehead down. Okay, there's an option as well. So if this is painful on the knee, this could be quite an intense posture is to come into a reclined pigeon, coming down onto your back, crossing the right ankle over the left, gently pressing the right knee open or drawing the left shin in towards the chest and allowing the stretch that way. Okay, so listen to where you are today. Try to avoid rolling the right hip off to the side. So if you don't have a block and your hip is kind of lifting up, try to make sure that the hips are level. So try to avoid the right sit bone dropping down while the left one reaches up. Take one more deep breath in and out through the nose. And as we inhale, walk the hands back up if they weren't already. Gently come back to either a three-legged downward facing dog or a tabletop. And just take any movements that you need to in the right leg to extend it out. Maybe some hip circles. Listen to what feels nice. That's quite an intense stretch. So take whichever movements feel good to you. And then when you're ready, we're coming to it on the left side. So bear in mind, this may feel different. Remember to modify if you need to. Bring the left foot forward to the outside of the left wrist and then heel toe. Oh, sorry, you can drop your right knee down here. Heel toe the left foot over towards the right wrist, bringing the left knee down towards the left wrist. 
Okay, so maybe your hip reaches the floor here, that's great. Maybe you're bringing the ankle more in line with the hip joint, that's fine too. Slightly different stretch, but still getting all the wonderful benefits. If you wanted to place the block underneath the sit bone, feel free to do that. Helps you stay a little bit more balanced. And then as we exhale, we fold forward, if you'd like, bringing the crown of the head, the forehead, or the forearms down. taking a few deep breaths in and out. Remember, if there's any pain in the knee, modify by coming into the reclined version on your back. Take one more deep breath in and out through the nose. Inhale, walk the hands back up. Release the block if you had it. <clears throat> Slowly as you need to, tuck the right toes under. Come back into your either three-legged downward facing dog or three-legged tabletop. Taking any movements you need to. So there's quite a tight um, flexion in the knee as well. So it may feel like a little bit of blood rushing back to the Four leg. And then come back into your either downward facing dog or tabletop. And then drop to the knees. Sit back on the shins. We're gonna come down to lay on our backs and we're gonna take some back bends. So we have two options. We have Setu Bandhasana or we have Urdhva Danyarasana, depending on how you're feeling in your back bends. I would say the first pose, oh, sorry, the second pose we did, standing cobra, was a good gauge for how you're feeling in your lower back. If you felt a really tight compression in your lower back or you felt really restricted in the chest or the shoulders, this could be an indication that uh, the back bends may be a little bit more challenging for you. That's not to say you shouldn't work with them, but just really go gently. Don't force yourself into anything that's going to hurt. For Setu Bandhasana, um, you can watch me first or you can uh, come into it with me if you know where you're going, but make sure you don't move your head from side to side. So for Setu Bandhasana, we're going to come to lay down on our backs. We're going to bring our heels in towards our sit bones. Bring the toes of the feet in slightly so the flat edges of the feet are parallel. Bring the arms alongside the body, palms face down. And then as we inhale, we move the pelvis into a posterior tilt. Tailbone reaches towards the backs of the knees as we roll onto the tops of the shoulders, or looking up towards the ceiling. Make sure the knees don't cave out to the side or collapse inwards. If you wanted to take it a little bit deeper into the chest and the upper back, you can roll one at a time onto the tops of the shoulders and interlace the fingers behind the back. Try to maintain a triangle of strength beneath your shoulders and the back of your head. So make sure both shoulders are pressing into the mat and the back of the head is pressing into the mat to relieve any strain in the neck. Check in with the feet. Make sure that the toes are still facing very slightly in. Hips are lifting up. The knees aren't collapsing. Breathing into the chest, expanding your breath throughout your ribs. Chest reaches towards the chin, and the chin reaches away from the chest. Take one more inhale. Exhale, release the bind, if you had it, and very gently release down. For the second round, you can either come into that again, or take a supported version if you'd prefer. Or for Urdhva Danyarasana, upward facing bow, quite an intense back bend. It's an extreme extension of the spine. So go gently. The feet will stay where they are, hips distance apart. The first option is to bring the palms of the hands alongside with the ears, fingers pointing towards the toes. If you're just starting out with your back bends and you wanted to try a slightly less intense version, bring the hands back slightly towards, uh, more towards the crown of the head. 
and then we're going to make sure our elbows are reaching up towards the ceiling they're staying parallel they're not falling out to the side or collapsing inwards grounding down through the palms of the hands as we inhale to start with we lift from the, the hips coming up onto the crown of the head checking with where we are here have the knees fallen out to the side make sure they stay aligned make sure the elbows are staying parallel and then from there begin to lift up towards straight bringing the arms towards straight pressing through the heels of the feet lifting the chest towards the wall behind you tune in with how you're feeling in your spine is there that compression in the lumbar spine if there is try to lift with the chest steady your breathing as best you can when you're ready to come out exhale chin to chest roll down and release if you're in Setu Bandhasana release as well gently I love that posture it's a really nice way of creating space along the front body also gets into all the niggles in the spine that throughout the day begin to compress through the front side of the spine so it's a nice way of gently releasing that well not so gently for sometimes <laughs> sometimes it feels good sometimes it can be a bit intense so <laughs> gently bring the knees in towards the chest very very softly take hold of either the thighs or the shins make sure not to roll into a ball here but instead keep the entire length of the spine nice and grounded Okay, it's always important when you're working with um, flexion and extension of the spine that we don't move into extreme ranges of motion too quickly. So if you just do a really intense back bend, try to avoid rolling into a forward fold straight away. It's not a great idea to be slingshotting the spine. And then slowly you can begin to bring the knees in a little bit more. And then we're going to come into um, Supta Baddha Konasana. I forgot the name of it then. So bring the soles of the feet together. Bring the knees out to the side. Bring your left hand to your heart, your right hand to your belly. So you can place the blocks underneath the knees here for support as we gently open up. Or you can just let gravity work its way, taking your knees towards the floor. If this is an intense posture, especially in the inner thighs, you can just bring the knees together, bring the feet to mat distance apart. Feeling the energy traveling in with your breath as we open up through the hips, the inner thighs. We've created a lot of space within our body. Now the benefits of all the work you've done, the flexibility, you've brought into the muscles to sink in. And hopefully you feel like you've had a good stretch. Take one more deep breath in and out through the nose. Inhale, bring the knees in towards the chest. We're just gonna come into a quick recline twist just to neutralize all the work we've done. So bringing the arms out to either a capital T position or a goal post position. As we exhale, we lower the knees over towards the right, maybe looking over towards the left as well. Just become aware of how you're feeling in the chest and the, as the pectorals stretch into the tops of the humerus, notice how you're feeling in the shoulders here. We didn't do a lot of stretching in the shoulders, so use this opportunity to open up, let the elbows draw down towards the floor, let the shoulders draw down towards the floor. If that means that the knees stay lifted, let the knees stay lifted. Or you can always place a block to support them. Breathing deep into the rib cage, feeling it expanding.
Take one more breath here. Inhale, bring the knees to center. Exhale, softly lower them over towards the left, looking out over to the right if it's comfortable in the neck. Feel the right shoulder drawing down towards the floor. Feeling the stretch across the front of the right chest to the top of the right arm. As we inhale, bring the knees to center. Take one last little squeeze. We've had so much space building in our body. Now's the time to just have that little bit of compression as we roll into a ball and then release. Bring the legs out long, bring the feet wide, release the arms alongside the body, palms face up and take a little bit of extra love to create the space within the body now. So maybe even bring the feet a little bit wider, allow the knees to roll open to the side. Maybe bring the arms a little bit wider if you have the space. Allow the shoulders to draw down away from the ears and towards the rib cage. Tuck the tailbone under slightly so you have the length in the lumbar spine. And then tip the chin towards the chest slightly to create the length in the cervical spine, the back of the neck. Now you've created all this space. Now is the time to fill it with all the beautiful new energy. Let go of your Ujjayi Pranayama. Allow your soft natural rhythms of breath to return to you. And allow yourself to become completely still as you rest here in your Shavasana. And I encourage you to stay here for as long as you have time for. Thank you so much for joining me today. As you go forward, I wish you peace in your thoughts, peace in your words, peace in your heart. Namaste.